Okay, so I, I was just... I just saw a little item that flew across my Facebook and it was about US Space Command and uh, the announcement was made by US Defense Secretary and the man's name is his last name is Esper ESP ER you all know what ESP is so someone who's an Esper is someone who's very good at things like telepathy telekinesis um, now you're going to just say, well, just, you know, my name is McDonald and I'm really good at making hamburgers. Which came first, uh, the man's family line, where, you know, were they always really good at ESP? Moving along. Okay, if we're going to talk about anything other than why do certain people have certain names? I mean, is it just totally random? Or is there something to people's names? Well, if you belong to the Caballarian Society, uh, they truly believe that the name that you're given um, has spiritual information. Uh, then there's numerologists, gematria. You can go and look up your name and try and figure it all out. Uh, various different kinds of, I don't know if it's astrology, but there's, yeah, it's, it's all that kind of stuff. And is there any truth to it at all? Well, uh, warning, put your bullshit detector on full blast. Um, imagine that we are living on a Star Trek holodeck. Now, most people have heard of Star Trek, and most people, I think, have heard of holodecks. But just in case you're one of the people that never watched Star Trek, a holodeck is a reality simulator. You can walk into a room, it's an empty room, and then they turn on the simulator and it's like, you know, the gamers that are playing virtual reality, they put the, the visor over and then they, um, and it's got speakers in here so that you, you get this 3D virtual reality. Well, a holodeck is just like that, but you don't need to put a helmet on because it all appears around you. So imagine that we are in a holographic reality, like a holodeck. And imagine that uh, it's supposed to be a game, this holodeck that we're in. It's supposed to be, uh, there was, um, in original Star Trek, the original series, there's an episode called Shore Leave, where uh, members of the Starship Enterprise beam down to the planet, and uh, on the planet there are sensors that sense your thinking. And so if you think of um, anything at all, the planet will manufacture it for you and put it into your reality. So, where am I going to go with this? If this is kind of the way that our reality is in this holodeck, then um, why is it that if I think of a million dollars, it doesn't just appear in front of me? The answer is, I don't know. But I do know today, uh, I gifted my niece with uh, some stuff, and it was in a green bag. It was a green bag, a green gift bag. And then I went on to YouTube, and the first thing I saw was a song from, 
a movie. They're not letting me know what the, it was, but the song was about a green bag. Why won't they let me know the name of the movie? Because they have no idea that that's what I want. Who's they? Oh, let's just say it's like Star Trek, the episode Shore Leave, and um, if the planet didn't know what I wanted because it read my thought and it couldn't understand my thought, uh, perhaps that's why they don't give me the word that I'm looking for. What do you mean? Well, uh, a number of theorists have said that the human brain doesn't create thoughts. It's a receiver for thoughts that come from what are known as source fields. So when I say they didn't want to give me the name of the movie, the source field was blocked. If I had direct access to, this, to the source field, I would get what I'm looking for. But... Uh, Planet Earth hologram is highly toxic because there are malevolent beings who have got control of planet Earth. And they are known as fat controllers. And the fat controllers are all about causing horrible, horrible for all of us. How do they do this? Um, they can, and I don't know how, because I don't understand in our holographic reality exactly the technical things that people are doing. You know, how can you say they're blocking your source field connection? Well, I took a course from the Hooded Sage, which is uh, Chris Kreptik, hoodedsage.com, many years ago, and um, some of the drawings he showed were of malevolent beings who could block your crown chakra where energy comes in and information comes in and these what he called dark pods clog up your crown chakra and then what then you can't get pure information from source these are demonic entities Now, if you go to hoodedsage.com, you can't see these pictures because uh, you have to buy access. And uh, at one time I did buy access, and I still remember a lot from the course. So, unfortunately, I can't give you pictures. Uh, but if you're, you know, you've got lots of money and you don't mind and you can always sign up for the course and get access to all kinds of Mr. Krupchik's information. Is it good information? It's the best that I've got. I am sorry that he doesn't provide it for free, because uh, if you'll notice my videos from yesterday, I am very much pro-gifting people whatever they need. And Mr. Krupchik apparently has not read uh, Charles Eisenstein's book about the gift economy and has not seen fit to open that up to the world. So, um, I'm very sorry for Mr. Krepchek because I think it's bad karma for him. At this particular junction uh, in time, he um, he's not well known and, uh, you know, whatever revenue he's getting from having this website, um, I'm sure it's really trailed right off. It doesn't seem to be actively promoting it. So um, withholding this information that he himself got from source, and you know, if it's true that he's a gifted uh, spiritual person, 
uh, holding on to this stuff, in my humble opinion, is really bad karma. It's, you know, huge ego, edging God out his ego. And um, what else can I tell you? There's plenty of other people around on the planet who call themselves spiritual teachers that have their hand out looking for lots of money. Is some of the teachings that they give uh, valuable? Um, well, let's put it this way. If I hadn't paid uh, Krepchik money to get some of this information, what would I tell you about the nature of this me looking for a word from source fields and not getting it, uh, I would still say it seems weird to me that I can't get the name. Now the name of a movie uh, comes trickling through and the name they give me is Pulp Fiction. It sounds right. So the question is why block me from getting that information right away? Uh, is it to disturb me, make me angry, to demonstrate to you? I mean, you're not going to know what's really going on in my head that I feel like there was something there that didn't come. Is it fat controllers? Uh, um, I don't want to tell you, but... Uh, Less is more, and perhaps I've given you enough information in this particular video. As for uh, Defense Secretary, Secretary of the United States, uh, Mr. Esper, Secretary Esper, I really encourage you to go on to Netflix if you have it and watch original series Star Trek because even in the first few episodes, they talk and show in those episodes beings who have got a lot of psychic powers. How bad is the ghoul situation on planet Earth? Uh, Mr. Krepchik's uh, mentor, uh, Stuart Wilde, uh, said that back in those days, before he supposedly passed on, that uh, planet Earth was full of ghouls, demonic entities. And Mr. Wilde was working to uh, help open channels for celestial beings to come in and uh, eradicate the ghouls. So the Great Ghoul War um, What's the status of it now? In my opinion, the ghouls are still hot and heavy on planet Earth. What are we doing about it? Pretty much what we have to keep doing is letting go of ego. Because the more ego we have, the more leverage the evil entities have on us and other people through us. Last but not least, I want to remind you that Ascended Master Sananda years ago said that what's going on with us is a great play in consciousness. I remind you that of the Star Wars movies were based upon what you're supposed to do on planet Earth, and that is go on a hero's journey. That's what basically all adventure movies are their hero's journeys, and you're here in a holodeck-like reality that we call planet Earth, and you are supposed to get going on your heroic journey. Uh, Mr. Krepchik said if you want to get going, uh, he said there's a magical energy called quest, and what you just do is you just say with intention, quest! And do that as much as you can to get yourself going on your adventure story for you personally.